Hola! Hi everyone, it is March 12th, 2016. Um, please forgive my absence, I haven't forgot about everyone. I delight and thoroughly enjoy encouraging everyone in the Lord. I, however, have been busy and if you've seen on my page, I went on my first mission trip, which was amazing. i um, experiencing another ethnicity and culture and just even the, the beauty of God's creation. And um, it, it did open my eyes to some things um, that I want to talk about. And I'm going to take this afternoon, of course, to encourage you. But the Bible, um, the whole counsel of God goes beyond encouragement. Um, it says that we are to edify, exhort, comfort and encourage one another and edify in some aspects means to admonish which means to gently correct and so I wanted to talk about what's your label and do the contents match the label see when I was in the Dominican and we were evangelizing um, to the people there um, I had a a and a barrier of communication because I don't speak Spanish except for a couple sentences that I learned that maybe I'll share with you next time. Um, but I had to depend on the interpreter and um, even with that I, I feel that we didn't clearly communicate at all times. But what I did understand in their culture, in the Dominican, when you would ask people if they were a Christian, you could see uh, the disdain and the defensive mechanisms uh, manifest by the expressions on their face. And you could tell that they were immediately like, no, I'm not a Christian. But I did learn one sentence that I will share with you, and it is, um, is Jesus in Su corazon, which means, is Jesus in your heart? Um, and I'm sure it's pretty choppy if anybody out there speaks Spanish. I'm just learning. At least I'm trying. <laughs> but anyways, when I would ask people if Jesus was in their heart, see, see, and you could see the joy and the light light up on them. And, um, and, and the first time the, the apostles were called Christians was in Antioch when Barnabas and Saul were preaching and somehow someone labeled them Christians, which truly does mean Christ follower. But I think that um, we misinterpret the label um, and I'm not going to speak anything ill about the Dominican or I'm not, you know, thoroughly educated on what's going on in their culture. But just for my brief observation, it was... Um, apparent that that label um, hurt them and somehow hindered them but when I would ask them if they had Jesus in their heart they said yes and you could see the joy of the Lord arise um, in and through them so what I want to ask in our American culture is I think that we may be um, in some aspects on the other end of the spectrum where if you ask someone if they're a Christian they're immediately like yes I'm a Christian of course I'm a Christian but if we got to the root of the matter how much does Jesus dwell in our hearts because what is dwelling in our hearts the Bible says out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and it also says that we want to take it even further than words because some people have mastered knowing the right cliches knowing the right words to say so we want to take it even a step further from beyond our words um, to Jesus said to examine the fruit that we you will know a tree by its fruit in other words you will know a person um, by their actions and um, and we're talking about in 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 the whole scope of things because no one is perfect we all make mistakes we all fall short we have days of frustration anger um, let down whatever the case may be but we're talking about in a whole um, what is the fruit of your life and if you're labeled a Christian do the contents of who you are if because to me see a Christian is someone who walks in faith hope love joy integrity honesty purity, um, trusting in the goodness of God. See, it's not behavior modification. We've been over this. It's it's submitting yourself to God. And, and, and then we say to Him who can do immeasurably more than we could think, ask, or imagine according to His power that is at work within us. Well, we have to connect to the power source. We have to stay in touch, in tune, in one accord with God, meeting with Him. And that's how we are filled with the power, the grace of God. See, the power of God 
is the grace of God. Yes, we have grace for forgiveness, and but we have the grace, the empowerment of the Holy Spirit that enables us to overcome sin. Um, you see, religion condemns, but relationship with God compels. See, being rooted in God's grace should manifest and bear the fruit of righteousness. Um, and once again, we all fall short. And I'm never, there is a difference between weakness and wickedness. Um, between being deceived and, and willfully walking in the deeds of darkness. And I just want to address some issues um, that the Bible speaks very clearly about. And this is the Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians 5. Um, one, and he says, I have written you in my letter not to associate with sexually immoral people and not meaning the people of this world who are immoral or the greedy and the swindlers or idolaters. In that case, you would have to leave this world alone. Um, so what he's saying is when with this instruction, he's talking about people who call themselves Christians, who say, I am a Christian. I believe in God. I follow God. Because to, to believe and follow God means to love Him, and it means to um, obey His commandments. No, we don't live under law. We live under grace. But the, the grace of God did not change the morality and the holiness and the purity and the righteousness of God. But what the grace of God did do is fill us with the Holy Spirit and enable us to have the strength to turn down temptation. Jesus is there to help us overcome temptation. So he's not saying that we can't, if we were referring to the people in the world, we wouldn't be able to talk to anyone because everyone in the world, if you're not saved yet, um, you're deceived and you're walking in something that is contrary to God. I don't care how um, good, what kind of humanitarianism work or philanthropy or whatever it is a person may do. If you're not walking with Jesus, you're deceived in some area of life. So Paul goes on to say, but now I am writing you that you must not associate with anyone who calls himself a brother, but is sexually immoral or greedy, an idolater or a slanderer, a drunkard or a swindler. With such a man, do not even eat. That's pretty, that's pretty serious. Um, the Bible also says, I think it's 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 33. Is it 1 Corinthians or 2 Corinthians? <laughs> Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Um, it is time for the body of Christ to rise up and walk in the fullness of all that God has for you. God does not ask us not to partake in certain activity because he's trying to rain on our parade. Um, Serving God is fun and his plans and purposes are an adventure and he has great things in store for those who love him. It says that he's working all things out for the good of those who love him, who are called according to his purpose. When you love God and you're called according to his purpose, you walk in the ways of God. You're seeking righteousness. And once again, this message does not meant to condemn anybody. Tell the devil to go to hell and that he has no business with you and I will not even give him a, an edge to try to work in someone's mind that God is mad at you. The point in me sharing this with you is to tell you that you don't have to fall prey to temptation, that God has empowered you with the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself is interceding for us. He is praying right now for you that you would overcome and that you would come outside of any immorality. Um, culture does not shape Christianity. Christianity should be cultivating culture and true Christianity. Those who love God, who know Jesus, who follow him, who walk in his will, in his way, in his righteousness, following behind him, desiring to please God and not please man. Um, and that would include that we are partners with God. Um, yes, it's an inside job. And I have said repeatedly that it's not behavior modification, that in the long term effect of things, we will not be able to maintain a righteousness of our own. That's why Jesus came. But by the power of the Holy Spirit, we are partners with God. There are times in life where you're just going to have to have the courage to say no. No, I'm not going to live with someone who I'm not married to. No, I'm not going to condone 
um, a brother and sister who says that they love Jesus, they go to church, they are a Christian, they are a follower of God, and everything about the, the behavior of their life is completely contrary to who God is. The Bible is very clear about those who walk after the flesh and those who walk after the Spirit. In Galatians 5, it talks about... Um, so I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit. The Spirit is God Himself who lives in you. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. And um, it's time to say no to the devil, to temptation, to evil, and trust God. Uh, once again, if you are in bondage, God is able to set you free. But there will be days that you may have to white knuckle it. You may have to fight with everything that you have, every fiber of your being to say no. And if you fall short, you ask for forgiveness, you get right back up and you press forward and you say, God, I am sorry and I do not want to live like this. And I am not willfully choosing to walk in the, the, the lust of the flesh, the pride of of life and the and the lust of the eyes and the things that are contrary to the spirit um, the sinful nature um, and they are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want but if you are led by the spirit you are not under law the acts of the sinful nature are obvious sexual immorality impurity debauchery idolatry witchcraft hatred discord jealousy fitch of rage selfish ambition dissension factions envy drunkenness orgies gossip um, and all the like are walking after the flesh after the sinful nature and Paul goes on to say, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. God chastens. He disciplines those he loves. If he's sending a word, if this, hey, if this applies, if this, if, if this don't apply to you, then let it fly. Pray for someone that you may know who needs help. Um, but I don't know about you, but I struggle with lots of things. I have have the privilege of having to overcome addictions with drug and actual alcohol i battle gluttony and laziness you think i don't still have um a sexual drive i i've I battle all the things that people battle and some days you just have to say no God is more important walking in the spirit the the fruit of the joy and righteousness and peace and contentment and love and fulfillment that comes with with following God is way more advantageous than the fruit of the lust of the flesh because they are things that you wake up shameful and condemned and hurting and chaotic and and anxiety and peace and and I'm not going to sit here and say only God knows truly knows the heart of a person um, who is saved and who is not saved but the stakes are too high I'm not willing to play with my soul for eternity it's just not worth it um, and once again it is all finished work by Jesus on the cross but if you truly have believed and received the Son of God as your Lord and Savior and you have submitted offer your body as a living sacrifice holy and pleasing and view of God's mercies that you would give your body to him not conforming to the patterns of this world but walking after the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit is love joy peace patience kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness and self and self-control against such things there is no law those who belong to Christ Jesus Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its passions and desires and since we live by the Spirit let us keep in step with the Spirit and let us not become conceited provoking and envying each other God loves you he truly has a great plan and purpose for your life um, there are so many promises in God's covenant and blessing and all that he wants to do and because he love you because he loves you he wants to see you overcome and by the way I hate devils my fight is never against a person or flesh and blood anything that we are deceived is the works of the devil Jesus came to destroy the dirty deeds of the devil I hate devils and I want to see them smashed under my feet and under your feet that you would overcome and you will walk in victory you would walk in the light of life in the goodness of God and the glory and blessings of his presence and provision in Jesus name so press on and, and seek God and seek righteousness and let's start cultivating culture instead of culture allowing culture to infiltrate and compromise 
who we are and who God called us to be. Live a life worthy of the high calling you have in Christ Jesus. This has been a monumental moment with Brandy Brees. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Until next time.